Hey, John Hickok here. Today we're going to take a look at the XM177 E2 from Brownells. It's one of their retro clones. It's a really uh, interesting and cool rifle. We're going to take a look at it. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit of the history of it and how good of a job they did of recreating this classic AR. It's weird to think of the AR-15 as having a classic variant, but here we are. In 2019, there are classic ARs and have been for a while. But first, let's shoot it. Because that's what you do with something like this. Uh, orange 2 liter. Bowling pin. Go ahead and get some of these pots. I'm going to go ahead and shoot the target too, actually, before I forget. That distinctive feel and sound of the last round of an AR. And of course, as always, R. so the XM177 E2, um, you know, it's an iconic rifle. You know, it started life as a uh, arm for uh, special forces in Vietnam, SOG, um, I think some of the early Navy SEALs. Uh, you know, it's it's part of the, the growing, uh, continuing trend that we see throughout military history of wanting smaller and smaller and smaller rifles and special operations always seems to be kind of at the forefront of that because right at the same time you know you know that this rifle is not what everyone had in Vietnam but you also know that soon after well not too soon after Vietnam but you know that eventually um, every American soldier had something that looked a little bit like this, right? So it's sort of the predecessor of the M4. So the Special Forces guys really were ahead of the curve, you know, going through the jungle with something like this when everyone else had full-length uh, M16s, you know, A1s. And then, of course, the A2s, which were still very long and, uh, and full rifles. So the idea of this was to have something shorter, lighter, compact, you know, for those guys going out and doing reconnaissance or whatever, you know, secret ninja, you know, operator stuff that, that they were, uh, that they were doing. Um, so that was a big aspect of this. And then also you have this, uh, unique muzzle device that they put on the end of these things. And these kind of went into service, you know, kind of in the late sixties, in the late 1960s. Um, but the point of this was a lot of people say it's just a big flash hider. But from some of the reading I've done and, and what I've heard other people say is that a big purpose of it was to re not re necessarily reduce the sound of the muzzle blast, but to change it so it didn't sound like an AR-15 being fired or an M-16 um, because they have a very distinctive sound. If you're familiar with firearms and have heard them fired very much, you can pick one out uh, over an AK or some other type of rifle. They have a unique sound, I think largely because of the you know, just it's a high velocity cartridge, it has a lot to do with it. But it was supposed to make it sound a little bit more like an AK, which is what, you know, the enemy at the time uh, was using. So that way it wouldn't necessarily give away that there were um, American troops operating nearby. But one of the issues of this muzzle device was that it got very dirty um, and it was, you know, not very easy to clean and it would start to cause issues and malfunctions with the guns and these these things were known for not being all that reliable which is why they didn't last that long but you know as with a lot of things they were very iconic because of the time that they were used even though they weren't used very long it was kind of the early days of what we think of of special operations and there's again so many movies you know so that that's why this is a, a, a special and important gun even though it's not so relevant today. Now, before I get into uh, how good of a job Brownells did, we're going to talk about uh, Atmex.com, and that's another uh, company that really helps us out a ton and we, that we appreciate. They're actually running a uh, they're a precious metals company, of course, and they are running a special right now on the or, or going to be running a special on the Silver 2020 uh, Eagles. And that's going to be going, you know, for about a month or something like that. They're going to do some giveaways. So go to atmex.com and uh, check out what all they have going on over there. We appreciate them 
just like all of our supporters. Okay, let's shoot this a little bit more. And I've got some 20 round magazines, you know, just kind of gives it a good classic look, although they did have the, the 30s. I, th I think initially, um, you know, they, the 20 rounders were what they were issued. Uh, but I think the 30 rounders then came around pretty pretty quickly. I'm, I'm not super uh, clear on all those timelines with Vietnam. I know that you know there was a bunch of different uh, variants of the M16 you know that came out you know the beginning of the war that had reliability issues and that's like a whole another you know uh, can of worms that I'm not going to get into. But I know that the 20 rounders was what they started out with and they went before they went to the 30. Okay. Let's uh, let's shoot some over on the hill. So start with that big uh, red square up there on the left. All right, not too difficult of a target. Let's move over to the next red plate over on the right. Okay, now I'm going to move on over to those two little ones. I'm going to start with the smallest one, see if I can pop in. All right. All right, let's move over to the right, very right. Okay, uh, let's see. I think there's a little bit of center block on top of that uh, barrel over there. All right, not a bad shooter. Now, that does bring me to something I want to point out before I get into the, the features. Um, we, uh, we had to really work to get the sights on this thing. If you look over there, we basically maxed out the adjustments on this thing, which is fine, but I don't know, like I, I don't necessarily like to see that. You know, if you buy a new rifle or a handgun or whatever, and uh, has adjustable sights, and you have to basically max out the potential of the adjustment capabilities of those sites like that's not a great sign uh it's not really what you want to see but we did get the rifle you know relatively zeroed for this kind of range so it shoots fine that doesn't seem to be an issue okay so what we've got over here is i'm gonna take my earmuffs off so i can hear what my uh, voice sounds like it makes it a little easier to talk okay so unload a mag in there that one's clear. Okay, so this is a 1983 um, civilian uh, AR-15 carbine that is often called the CAR-15. Now, this is not the same gun. This is not an XM-177, but I have this out here as an example of kind of like what they were doing at this period with the caveat that on the civilian guns, they use older parts. Like, for example, this doesn't have the fencing around the mag release like this does and it doesn't have the forward assist um, when you know obviously they would have by the 80s of course they I mean they by the early 60s they had these or the mid 60s uh, but I want I had it out here because I want to show you some of the some of the features that should be on here that are not like for example the finish so I feel like the, they kind of didn't get the finish very good on this thing uh, it should look like this. I mean, the, the finish on this Brownells rifle should look like like this firearm because it is just a gray, you know, parkerized finish, which you know is how those uh, those guns were done back then. And what this is is kind of like I don't know. It almost looks like it looks like the color of my jacket almost. It kind of has a a weird like almost purplish kind of sheen to it. And from what I've seen, the original when they first released these things, it was kind of a black finish. And I guess, I don't know if they got some feedback and, and people informed them that it's supposed to be gray and then they decided to make it gray and they didn't really get it right. It should be parkerized. It should look like the barrel up here in the front sight post. Uh, but instead it looks like, I don't know, it look, it's off. It doesn't, it doesn't look right. Um, and another thing that this gun has that this one should have is this stock. So the um, original uh, Colt Commandos had a, aluminum stock 
a, a collapsible stock just like this one and it's very solid very positive works great but this is plastic and not only is it plastic it does not work very well you really have to kind of fight with it it seems like maybe it's loosened up a tad but probably here there it kind of you know grinds you know so it, it just you know it doesn't work great and you got to really squeeze it hard to get to work and it, it's just very awkward to use and very very cheap uh the stock is is uh is not not very good at all you know it would have been nice if they could have put an aluminum stock on there like the original since that's what this is supposed to be a uh, reproduction of but at least at least it would they could have you know they could have had a better uh, polymer stock on there I and mean, this this is really junk this stock i have to say um but there's a lot of other good features about it like example they've got you know they got the right fencing on on here and it's got the right teardrop for it assist you know it's got the fixed carry handle of course the a1 adjustable sights um like everything over here is, you know seems fine they got you know got the, pretty much the right grip on there uh you know with the this uh, sling swivel attachment right there um, it's got the muzzle device which looks good except for this little weird uh, weld mark under there um, because the barrel is shorter than 16 in inches and per um, federal law it's an NFA item if the barrel is under 16 inches on a rifle unfortunately um, but one way around that is to you can have a shorter barrel but you, you pin the muzzle device on there so it becomes part of the barrel Right, so that would be different from the original and something they couldn't really do anything about. But it still seems like they could have done something about the weld on there and made that a little better. Um, they did grind off the bayonet lug, which is uh, true to the originals on, the I think, the first edition of the Brownells XM177s. They uh, didn't do that. It had the, it had the uh, bayonet lug on it in some of the early videos. Um, that I've seen on them, so that they so they fixed that. That's good. Um, and like I said, they went back and changed the finish from black to gray. But in a way, it almost looks worse. I'd almost rather it be black because the gray it's very noticeably not the right type of gray finish. Uh, one difference here on the castle nut. Um, it, it's a modern castle nut, whereas if you look at this, is the type of. Uh, of nut that they were because it's technically not a castle nut because it doesn't look like a castle right that's where it comes from those little notches so you can adjust it um you know and, it's, and i don't believe it's staked yeah it's not staked on this one and you can see it's staked here so that's what um that should look like but that's not a big you know that's not a big issue like those little little things like that don't bother me that much if they would just put a better stock on here or even better an aluminum stock like this one and get the finish right and parkerize this thing, it would be a much closer representation of the XM177. Like those are the two big things that are just kind of glaring to me that make it hard for me to, to truly enjoy this gun as a, a, a replica. Uh, but, you know, if you're not as worried about that, it's a good shooting little gun. It's, it's light, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. It's a neat classic AR and let's shoot it some more. And it's a reasonable price. I mean, that's one thing. <clears throat> you know, Colt does make a um, XM177 reproduction themselves. Uh, they did like a limited run of them, and they're very expensive. They're like $2,500, where you know these can be had for like a thousand. You know, so there's a little bit of a you get what you pay for, you know, kind of thing going on. Um, but I, you know, I still think at the price point of this rifle, they still could have gotten the finish right at least. Um, but it's like I said, it's, it's still a fun gun. I don't mean to to completely trash it because you would enjoy this. You know, it's fun to shoot. All right, let's take out this pumpkin. Get here where I'm not going to hit the steel behind it. All right, we caught the steel a little bit, but wasn't too crazy. Uh, it's, it's just a very fun, a fun little gun. Um, you know, it's again, it's not 
an exact reproduction. You know, really, I think your your best bet, if you have the hots for one of these, is either try to find one of these original uh, Colt SP1s, like the Car 15 carbine like this. You know, you're not gonna have the, like I said, you're not gonna have the forward assist and the, the, the fencing around the uh, mag release, but at least it is an old original gun. Um, or maybe look at building one. You know, you can, you can get these parts, the upper and lower receivers and uh, all that stuff from Brownells. So that's one way to go. You can buy the parts, build your own. Uh, I saw a video with a guy on YouTube, the Canadian Gun Vault. Um, he has a YouTube channel and, you know, he, he was shooting one of these that he had built himself, you know, and that, that is probably what I would do in the future. Uh, because, like I said, there's, a, there's some things about this that kind of, I don't know, they kind of bug me enough to where I can't enjoy it as a replica like I would like to. So, and I don't want to spend $2,500 on one from Colt. Um, so I would probably rather just build one myself. And that's what I would advise you guys to do if you really want one of these. I know uh, Troy makes one that, that's, that's a more accurate, accurate uh, representation, but I don't think they made very many and they're really hard to find, you know, so there's not a lot of, of great options out there. One advantage of these old SP1s is they will increase in value because there's a finite number of them. They only made so many and they're not making any more of these like true, you know, original civilian versions of the Colt AR. So, you know, those, these are actually like an investment, you know, uh, whereas even if you bought one of the, the modern Colt ones, you know, if you left it in unfired condition, they might uh, eventually be collectible one day, uh, 50 years from now. Um, you know, so you can't bank on that with those. But, you know, it's a pretty neat gun. Let me shoot it one more time before I let you guys go. Oh, we got another mag over here. You got to shoot the classic metal mags. We got one of these. All right, let's take out these two liters. Oh, we got a water jug over here too. Yeah, it came at me. Uh, let's see. Let's go back over on the other hill. got left like 10 or so put them in the burn barrel all right one thing that's interesting this muzzle device which um oh yeah that's something i meant to mention the muzzle device actually isn't just a originally wasn't just a tube like this one is it actually had some baffles in there and it made it classified as a suppressor so this is not the real muzzle device that the original XM 177s had because now those are considered a suppressor uh, even though they didn't really take the sound down all that much but what's interesting is I noticed this when I was shooting it the other day even if you shot many suppressors you know you get a lot of gases and stuff that come back in your face especially as the gun you know heats up this is doing that you know it, it can feel it kind of coming back uh, when I shoot fast and, and it kind of throws a lot more dirt and stuff back into the gun like a suppressor does even though it doesn't have the baffle so it's kind of kind of interesting not not really enough to be annoying but uh worth noting so there you go the brownells retro rifle um, i'm excited that they are making these i think it's really neat this is the only one i've really taken a look at so far but you know there's not really many other companies you know doing these retro rifles so i really commend them for 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 doing these and making making this line of of ars um, I just wish they, like I said, would have done a better job on this stock, either a better polymer stock or uh, a true to the original uh, aluminum stock and, and, a, and a better finish. I mean, that, that gray is just, I mean, look at it again next to, 
next to this gun, you know, you can see the difference there. It's just, it's just not, not quite right. But all in all, it's a fun gun to shoot. You know, a thousand bucks, not a crazy price. Um, and these, these things are neat. And you know, we a lot of us shooters love these things from Vietnam movies or Terminator 2 or what or whatever it is. So, anyways, uh, neat gun worth looking at. And I appreciate you guys for watching the video. And see you next time. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, While well, I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes. Uh, grips can you believe it uh, for all different types of firearms you can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture uh, just sticks right on there you know really affordable really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com you'll be glad you did and also ballastol uh, dad has been using ballastol for many years it's a cleaner and a lubricant and it's non-toxic uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.